We're saying pick any two natural numbers. There has to be a relationship between them, specifically either x is equal to y. Or, I'll just make sure I get yes. Same as mine now. If x is y plus u, or y is x plus v. One of these three things I can should call some one to two. And this proof really consists of two different things that you need to do. The first thing you need to verify that only one of those three things can happen simultaneously. And so we've already verified that. Now we also need to verify that um, one of them has to happen, right? We know that if one of them has happened, then the other two can't happen. But now we have to verify that one of them has to happen. And so um, we're doing it by induction. And we've shown so far that if you have case one, which was that x equals y, then when you take y successor, you land in another one of those three cases. Okay, specifically, you land in case two, or no, sorry, case three. That if you have y successor, you land in, in this case, because if you started here and take y successor, then x is equal to y plus one. No, sorry, um, how, how did that proof run? It said, when you take y successor, yeah, you've got case three. We assume that one and three held, and that two That was to show that only one can happen. Oh. Only one of these three. Now we're saying, um, if this equation holds true, and you take y successor, do you land in another one of these cases? And you do, right? Because if x is equal to y, then y successor has to be y plus one, which you have then landed in case two. No, you landed in. I'm just going to sneak through the big proof. Because these, these proofs are kind of slippery. And uh, you get one of the cops. I'll take that one. Why? No, you might want to stop it. So that y be an m. Assume that x is equal to y. Hmm? Then when you take y successor. Oh, that's right, yeah. So yeah, you're equal to y plus 1. But y and x were equal. And so wherever you see a y, you can replace it with an x. And so you land in case 3, because y successor is equal to x plus 1. Okay. So we've proved that if you start here and you take y successor, you land back in one of these cases. You land back in case 3. Y successor is x plus something. Okay. So now we're going to say, consider case 2. What if you start with this equation, x equal to y plus u? Then we want to know, when you take y successor, will you land back in one of those three cases? And continuing with that theme of how slippery these proofs are, we're going to split this up into two subcases. Okay? We'll call them scenarios just to make it more clear. So scenario one is that you could have been one. Assuming that we're in this case for y, what we get is that um, x would have been equal to y plus 1. that um, if 
x and y satisfy a relationship such as this, then when you consider y successor, y successor is going to satisfy one of these relationships as well, right? If x and y satisfy this relationship, when you take y successor, you get that it satisfies an equation. X, um, x has to equal y successor. So you blend it back in case one. x is equal to y plus 1, then what can we say about y successor? Does y successor land in one of these three cases? And the answer is yes, because take a look. x is equal to y plus 1 by assumption, but guess what? That's just y successor. So that says that y successor has to equal that method. back into one of those relations there. Scenario two is that y is, um, sorry, that u is different from one. And we want to know, does y successor satisfy one of the Yes, it does, but the way, we, the way we see it is a little bit slippery. What we're going to do is we're going to let W case two, so we're assuming that y satisfies something of this form. Right? X and y have this relationship that to get to x, you take y and you add a little bit. Right? And what we can do is we can say, let's go ahead and think of x as it's been assumed, which is that we're assuming x satisfies this relation. Right? And we know that u can really be thought of as the successor to w. And the successor to w can really be thought of as 1 plus w. So this thing as 1 plus w. And if you want to be really nitpicky here, as Landau would be, this would all be in parentheses, right? W successor is the same as 1 plus W. This would all be in parentheses. And then the associative law says we can regroup terms. And what is Y plus 1? Y successor. Yep. Y successor plus W. And so, now you'll notice that we've landed back into one of those three cases that we're trying to verify holes. Between, you know, you fix an x, x is fixed this whole time, and now you, um, you say, let y be such that one of these holes, 
you want to know that when you succeed y, when you take y successor, that you land back in one of these cases where x is the same x that was fixed initially. Okay? And so we started here. We said, suppose that we're in this equation, and suppose that um, we're looking at this y successor. What we can do is um, we can, to, to generate that y successor that we want, let's go ahead and just peel off a term from u. Regroup that term with y, and that gives you a y successor. So that tells you that y successor then has to satisfy one of these relations. You land right back here in case two, right? This is equation two, where it says that x can be thought of as y successor plus a number. So just a brief recap of what we've done then. We said, if you start with x equals y, and you take y successor, you're going to land back in one of these three cases. What did we find? If you set x equal to y and take a successor, you land in case um, 3, because y successor is one other than x, right? So we're done there. Whenever, whenever you start with this equation and succeed, you land back in one of these three cases, right? Then we move to the next scenario. We say, suppose that you start with this case. In this case, we broke it up into two pieces. We said, suppose that u is 1. If u is 1, well, guess what? You get y plus 1 is x, or in other words, y successor equals x. So that says that um, if x and y satisfy this relationship and u is 1, then y successor has to satisfy one of these three. The next case said, suppose that u is not 1. If u is not 1, then you had a predecessor. So what do you do? You peel off one unit from that predecessor and group it with y, so that now you have y successor. And guess what? Now you've shown that it satisfies one of these equations. You peel that sucker off and group it with y, so that y successor plus some number w has to equal x. So you're, again, satisfying one of these three equations. So that takes care of case 2. Now, case three, suppose that this equation holds. Case three says, suppose that um, y is equal to x plus b. We're fixing x, but now we want to consider the successor to y. Your thing's going to die. Okay. So to demonstrate this case, all we do is we note that y successor is the same as x plus b successor, which is, by properties of addition, the same, same thing as x plus b successor. And guess what? We line it right back into scenario 3, which says um, if you have y if you have y successor and an x, you want it to satisfy one of those three equations, and we have it. We have that y successor is x plus some number. So if you start at case three and then consider a successor, you land back in case three. Ridiculous, but we're even doing some of this stuff, okay? So, uh, section three is on ordering.
hear a chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at what this means. It says x is larger than y if starting from y you have to increase by a little bit to get to x. Right? And um, I should point out that the reason this works is because we're in the natural numbers, right? If we had the integers, this would no longer make any sense. Because you could have x equal to y plus 0. And if x is equal to y plus 0, then x and y are the same. So you wouldn't write x is greater than y, even though we could write this equation, right? So the reason this equation gives you that x is greater than y is because you're in the natural numbers. Mm -hmm. So anytime you add something, you're adding 1 or higher. And so that says that x is equal to y plus something in addition to that, right? So that's the basic definition of um, that inequality. So let's do an example. Examples. 7 is greater than 5. Uh, Newsflash. Um, but why? Why is 7 greater than 5? It's because 7 is equal to 5 plus a little bit more. Thirteen is greater than nine because thirteen is equal to nine plus some. Nine plus nine plus four. So that's what it means to be greater than. And is seven is greater than five whenever you have to add something to five to get to seven. And that's the proof. No, those are just examples of what that definition means and why it makes sense to use that symbol right now. So one thing that I'd like to point out. And this may sound a little bit silly, but think about it for a second and you start to realize it's true. We have not yet defined the symbol that points to the left. Not yet. We have to define it. And that's what I mean. It's, it, it, it seems kind of silly. It's like, well, if we've defined this, isn't the other one basically the same thing? And Landau breaks it down to where he says, you know, those are technically two different symbols. And so we have to define this one. So. And let me just verify, does he call this? Yeah, so this is definition three. We say x is less than y. if y is equal to x plus a little bit more. Can you repeat that? If y is what? x? I just want to get your verbiage down. Mm -hmm. y is equal to x plus something more. Thank you. already that this is a really difficult theorem. This is essentially theorem 9, just with a different label. Okay. So we're going to compare theorem 10 to theorem 9.
theorem 9 says one of these three things must hold. Either x is the same as y, or x is y plus a little bit more, or y is x plus a little bit more. So we proved this already. It's a very difficult proof, if you guys think back. But now that we've proved theorem 10, or sorry, theorem 9, we can just use that proof in theorem 10. So to prove theorem 10, all that we do is we note that by theorem 9, one of these three cases must hold. X is Y, or X is Y plus a little, or Y is X plus a little. So if this holds, that's case A from theorem 10. Now what if this holds? If this holds, then this is really just saying that x is greater than y. This is true by definition of um, greater than. And if it's this case, then what this is saying is that um, x has to be less than y. And this is true by definition of less than. So we did all the heavy lifting back in theorem 9. Theorem 9 established that I guarantee that one of these three things must hold. And then we just introduced these new labels called less than and, and greater than. And we just apply them to what we did in theorem 9. So theorem 10. So it must be true that x is equal to y, or x is greater than y, or x is less than y. So theorems 11 and 12 in line up, we're just going to combine them because they're so minutely different from each other that you can basically do them simultaneously. This is um, theorem 11. If x is larger than y, then y is smaller than x. <laughs> And what's theorem 12? It says if x is smaller than y, then y is larger than x. So as you can see, yeah. so, as you can see, we can safely combine these into one. And uh, the proof is pretty simple. That means that um, 
why you created the podcast. And that's all that this theorem says. If x is less than y, y is greater than x. So you can switch them. And it's basically just true by definition of what a greater than and a less than means. Y is greater than x if x is something, sorry, x plus something. So that holds. And x is less than y if you have to add something to x to get y. So that holds. And we, We've proved this one. We won't go through the proof of this. It's basically the same thing, just with a y plus u instead of x plus v. Theorems 13 and 14. X is less than Z.
very, very accessible, and I'd like to have you guys work through it. But we'll just, we'll just continue. Um, what does this mean? Sometimes it really helps to start at the end and work your way backwards, okay? We want to demonstrate that x is less than z. So I'm going to use this notation here, WTS. Um, it's, it's an S. WTS says <laughs> So we want to show that x is less than z, meaning we want to show that um, z is equal to x plus something more. We'll call it A. If we can show this, then we've done our job, right? Because we've shown that x is going to be smaller than z. So it very often helps to start at the end, and we want to work our way towards this destination. So, let's start here. x less than y. We know that if x is less than y, then y is equal to x plus a little bit. We'll call it x plus z. Here's the magical step. We're assuming that these two hold, right? So we know that these two equations must be true. Now all we do, let's substitute this y right in here. So I think that one's a little more interesting. Questions on that before we go on? Tarantino, what's that mean? Sorry, that hand back there. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I, Just I not as so much blood involved. <laughs>
So this is pretty believable, right? If x is smaller than y, sorry, smaller or the same as y, and if y is less than z, then x also has to be less than z. Pretty easy to reason. Right? Um, well, this one we're going to skip to. I'll probably assign it as a homework exercise at some point. a number system where that fails to hold. Yeah, it includes zero. If you have natural numbers, it holds. But if you have uh, whole numbers, for example, where you have zero, this no longer holds, right? Because you can have x plus zero, and that's not greater than x. It's just equal to x, right? Or if you had integers, if you had x plus a negative number, this thing is not going to be larger than x, it's going to be smaller than x, right? So, this is only true because we're working in the natural numbers. And the proof here is kind of tricky. Um, what do we need to do? So NTS means need to show. That x plus y is x plus another number. Because that's our definition of greater than, right? Is, you know, say that y is greater than x means that y is equal to x plus another natural number. So, if we're trying to show that this thing is greater than x, we need to show that this thing is equal to x plus another number. Well, if we have x plus y, is that equal to x plus another number? <laughs> yes, because it's x plus the number y. And so we see that this number, x plus y, is equal to this number plus something else. So x plus y has to be greater than x. Just like that, the proof consists of writing this equation down x plus y plus x plus y. And that's, that's, that's even what Lambda does. See, there on the other one is 18. Yeah, that's his proof x plus y equals x plus y. Anyway, um, and, but that's the interpretation. So the sum is equal to x plus a little bit. So that sum has to be larger than x.
x is greater than y, or x is equal to y, or x is less than y. Then x plus z is greater than y plus z. Or x plus z is equal to y plus z. Or x plus z is less than y plus z. So this case corresponds to this case. This case corresponds to that case and to this. Right. If you add a natural number to both sides of an inequality, the inequality stays true. Right. So we'll label these cases A, B, and C. What's the definition of greater than? One plus a number plus. Yeah, y plus a number. Yep. X is equal to y plus some number u. Right. There's a little technical detail that I just want to make sure that I cover cover my butt and don't get into trouble with that technical detail. So we're going to write this really obvious thing. And now let's substitute x equal to y plus u in for x right here. So we get x plus z is equal to x is also equal to y plus u. Okay, so this thing here is getting replaced by y plus u. Reshuffle those parentheses, and we get y plus u plus z. Oops, no, I'm sorry, I didn't want to do that just yet. I want to commute it as well. do that. Yeah, sorry. So shuffle those parentheses, u plus z. Commutative law with the u and the z. And then reshuffle the parentheses, y plus z plus u. Okay. Then what have we shown? We've shown that if you have x greater than y, 
then x plus z has to be greater than y plus z because x plus z is equal to y plus z plus a little bit more. Okay. So I guess we're out of time. Yep.